very hot. Between the heat, the tons of stuff in life that have been popping up, multiple funerals, a trip overseas, I haven't really been able to do much. At least on the camper side of things. I've been busy doing stuff here and there, like I built this cool little rig here for the video that you're going to see here in a second. And it's just been too hot consecutive days and weeks of over 100 plus humidity being above 70 to 100 percent it's just been awful so i haven't really been able to get anything done tons of planning tons of parts and buying and whatnot i'm getting ready to probably expand the garage but after this summer i'm just done dealing with this heat and trying to work in it so we're going to try to extend the garage and make an air-conditioned woodworking shop and that's going to be it for a future thing but oh, the one good thing is, is what you're going to watch and probably why you clicked it in the first place is alcohol takes a lot of time, but you don't have to do it all outside. So hope you enjoy something a little bit different. It's not my normal thing, but it's definitely in line with, <laughs> with the channel. A little bit of redneckery and uh, enjoy. For this batch, I actually started with a local raw honey that I got from our grocery store. I started with a pound of frozen cranberries that I pulverized in a blender, mixed it in with about 1 to 5 ratio of honey to water. I then used a packet of wine yeast that they use in winemaking. Not sure why, but I used to work at a meadery and that was the kind we used. Here it is right there. I'll put it up here as well so you can see it when it's a little bit more still. Um, I just mix it together in this right here. One packet's good for about five gallons. I did about two and some change in this batch. Um, the container you're looking at here is only one, but it'll be put into a bigger batch shortly. Here I am just transferring the mixture over from the mixing vessel to the fermentation vessel. It's basically just a five gallon jug. You might notice that there's some bubbles in there. That's actually left over from when I was sanitizing it. Everything has to be sanitized in alcohol making or you run the risk of foreign bacterias and nastiness getting into your mix, which is not a good time. Remember when I said that you need about a one to five ratio? Well, this is probably the easiest way I know how to do a one to five ratio is you just take however much honey you're using use the same vessel that came in in order to get your five for it. This should yield about a 8 to 10 percent AVV by the time you're done with it. Um, that's my sanitation bucket by the way so anything that touches product, anything that touches anything that's going to touch product you have to keep sanitized. But you just gotta keep on it got to make sure everything's nice and well mixed so that the yeast has no problems getting to anything that it wants to. You're also going to see me here checking the specific gravity so I can figure out what the ABV is going to be when it's finally said and done. Always use some kind of a bubbler when making any kind of alcohol otherwise you might end up with the product exploding on you. Once the product is done fermenting or is still, it's time to rack it to get the product off of the sedimentary layer. Be that dead yeast, bits and pieces of fruit, whatever, you just don't want that in your final product. It's chunky. This is the time to also add sorbate and sulfides if you want to use them. Uh, I use sorbate because it helps kill the yeast, but I have friends that actually can't have sulfites, so I don't use it. I'm just very cautious about storing and things of that nature. Time for the second rack and the back sweetening. Some people like to, when they make mead, not back sweeten. They just put in the sugars that they want, let it do its thing, and whatnot. I prefer this way because it gives me better control over what the end ABV will be. After 
after sitting in a fridge for a week, it's time for bottling. I put it in the fridge to make sure it didn't restart and start fermenting again, and that tends to be a problem when you back sweeten. As you can see, I ended up with about nine and a half bottles of mead off of the two gallons that I started off with. Um, I th my calculations were about right. This batch ended up being right around nine to about 11 ABV. Kind of hard to tell with the fruit being in there. It changes it a little bit. I also, here's a first batch and second batch comparison of sh the first batch on the left not shredding fruit and the second batch where I did has a much deeper color to it. First batch was a complete and utter disaster. I didn't get any of the recordings on that or I just threw them away because I was ashamed. It was really bad. It was not a good mead. This current one was actually a lot better. Um, in one of the... Pr in an earlier part of the video you'll see where I'm trying to plug in the pump because I just got it from my granddad's shop and I ended up making a brand new stand for it and I actually wired it up with a switch so I could just turn it on and off and it made filling the bottles significantly easier. But yeah, this is the first installment. I've got some more projects down the line and one of the cool things is I've got two more batches of mead I'm going to be starting here pretty soon. One is going to be a hibiscus flower mead with this right here and the next one is going to be a lingonberry I'm going to try and make some from f dried fruit this time instead of a fresh fruit and see how that turns out but at any rate thank you guys for watching and I'll see y'all next time